sales representative within uh, Nairobi region, uh, especially uh, Kiambu is the area where I, I really handle. Uh, so I want to really thank everyone who have been able uh, to join us today. I hope you all had a good day. Uh, today's session is about egg quality, uh, which will be handled by uh, Daniel Moraria from Unga. Uh, so I just want to hand all the session over to him. And uh, again, thank you all for joining us. Uh, I hope we are going to have a good session. I'll meet you when you're having the Q&A. Karibu sana, Daniel. Thank you, Patrick, for this, uh, for the kind introductions. My name is Daniel Muraria. I uh, will be able to go through the, today's session. I'm joined by my colleagues. I've seen Nancy Nanga. If you could kindly just unmute and say hi to farmers. Nancy? All right. Um, we have uh, some of our colleagues uh, who as well have joined us, both from uh, Kenchik and Unga Farm Care. Uh, so then at the end of this session, uh, we'll be able to maybe hear from some of them as they're going to assist us in the question and answer session. Uh, just to take you through uh, the Microsoft Teams, if you are going to be having questions through the presentation, you can simply use the chat function, just type the question, just type the um, clarifications that you are seeking, and at some point we'll be able to um, go through what is what is going to be on the chat function. So without much further ado, allow me to go to the presentation. And uh, today's topic is on um, egg quality. The question is, does it really matter? So as I had mentioned, I work for Unga Farm Care East Africa, and we usually like to introduce the company to some of you who have not yet interacted with the company. Our mission has been to achieve and to maintain market share in leadership of provision of human nutrition and animal health products. And this is to across all the stakeholders within East Africa. Whenever you meet with any one of us, um, these are some of the core values you need to pick. Self-responsibility, trust, respect, integrity, innovation, continued improvement, and teamwork. These are the values that as well we continue to strive to achieve even as we uh, create new products, we interact with all our stakeholders. Some of the things we do as a company is that we do commercial products. Most of you have interacted with the Fugo range of feeds. We have Afia Bora range of minerals. And for the farmers who are mixing feed for themselves, we have the Viminera range, that is the concentrates, the macro packs and the premixes. As well, we do distribution products, for tall nutrition, for zebra and others. Some of the uh, aspect that most of the farmers are not aware is that as well, we do technical services. We do offer analytical and advisory services free of charge to our customers. And uh, for some specific clients, we're able to do customized animal nutrition solutions. These are mainly the breeders, other species like the fish, the mice, monkeys. These are specialty diets. So if you are joining us today for the first time, we've had this training all the way from last year. And then we took a bit of break during the December holidays and we continued in February. And our coverage has been on the three balls, that is on the feed management, on the farm management, and on the health management. So today, our main focus is going to be on farm management. As you can see, we have done a series of trainings. 
but today our target is on the egg quality influences in our farms. So in a nutshell, when somebody asks you, what is egg quality? As a simple definition, I'll say that um, it is a characteristic of a given food that influences preference for that food by the consumer as defined by grammar 1951. And so having that definition, it means that egg quality will mean different things to different people. For some, egg quality is about the breed of the bird. That is whether it's an ISA brown, whether it's an highline brown. For some is the size of the egg. Others will be the color. Others will be the hygiene of the egg, etc. But as well, the egg quality differs whether you are having the eggs for incubation, whether you are having eggs for table, whether you are having the eggs for baking. So in a nutshell, egg quality really varies, depends with the intention and with the people. So just to give you a brief outlook on how it varies based on the breed of the bird. What you're seeing on your screen is an expected target growth rates and egg production of an ISA brown laying bird. So my main focus on this table is on this column of egg weight. So as we are going, as the bird ages, the egg weight continues to increase. Yeah, as you can see, down up until week 53, then it continues on the next table all the way up to 90 weeks. So depending on the age of the bird, the egg will have different weights. And so then I think this answers the questions to most of the farmers where they observe smaller eggs as a bird starts to produce and then bigger eggs as the birds grow. This again is another chart for another breed of the bird, laying bird called Highland Brown. The same thing. From week 18, when the birds start to lay, the average egg weight is around 48 to 50 grams. So as a bird age, the average weight of the egg increases. So in terms of the quality of this egg, definitely is going to be different based on the breed and the age of the bird. Another aspect in terms of egg quality is as I've showed you in terms of the weight, there are some markets I've not really seen in this local market, but outside there, the weight of the egg determines the price that you're going to sell the egg. So you find when you have eggs which are less than 42 grams, they call it a PV and it fetches a certain price. When your eggs are between 42 to 49 grams, they are categorized as small, they fetch a different price. Same happened to medium, large, extra large, and jumbo. So this is how they perceive egg quality in their market. Now, for breeders who hatch eggs for incubation, they as well have their way of considering egg quality. So they'd want to focus much more on an ideal egg as opposed to all these other eggs you're seeing on your screen. So they don't want 
to hatch an egg that has calcium deposit, that is blood stained, that is cracked, that is dirty, stained, toe punched, membrane, round, slab sided, small, all this. So then to them, quality differs from other people. So then, then that brings me to the basics of an egg. I know we are not new to eggs, but for us to be able to understand today's learning, we need to really understand what is the content of an egg. If this is a lot of science to you, forgive me, but at least I know we'll be able to grasp, grasp some basics here. So generally an egg has an albin, albumen that is comprised of the outer thin layer, outer thick layer, chalazai, this trans, inner thin layer, and the inner thick layer. That's the albumen. And then it also is composed of the yolk. So this is a yolk that is having the germinal disc and the vitalin membrane. Then as well, the egg consists of a shell. So then we have the cuticle on the most outer part. We have air cell that it, it's part of the shell. And then we have the inner shen, shell membrane. And then as well, we have the outer shell membrane. So then this is a basic structure of an egg. So I'll spend some few uh, minutes for us to really fully understand what happens in our laying bud and where things usually go wrong. This is important because if we are able to understand this entire process, we'll be able to really take care of our birds well. And of course, as farmers, we'll be able to realize better profits in our enterprises. So then the egg making process starts up here, and then it goes down up until here, and then we get an egg at the end. I'm going to go briefly so that we are all at par. So at the stage of the ovary, we have the ovum, which is basically the yolk, grows inside here. And when it has matured, it is released to this thing called infadibalum. So that is the normal process, the expected process. So however we find when the yolk has fully grown from the ovary, Sometimes it fails to come into the infadibulum and then it is deposited outside. And so then when the bird, for instance, gets a bit of infection and then uh, we open up the bird, we tell you that the egg was not deposited inside the infadibulum and it is in the abdominal cavity. So it can happen. But the normal process is when it is delivered here to the in Fadibalam, and then it takes only 15 to 30 minutes in this place. And the length of this thing is only 10 centimeters. So what happens here? After the yolk has been re released from the ovary, it forms this, what we call inner thick layer. And then the precursor for the chalazai starts to form. So then that's what happens here. 15 to 30 minutes only. And then from this place, the egg moves down to the magnum. So the magnum is the longest reproductive tract of a laying hen, around 30 centimeters. And here, that egg which is forming takes around two to three hours. This is where 
a lot of proteins is deposited inside that egg. And this is where the albumin, what we call the egg white, is deposited in the egg. And as you can see now, our egg is trying to take the shape. So then we are finding the albumin has been added, the outer thin, outer thick, the inner thin, and now the chalazai is nearly formed well. Now, just to note and to have you take this point is that there are some factors that can make this albumin not to be, not to develop well. For instance, as a bad ages, the formation of albumin uh, goes down. When the buds are under any form of stress, heat stress, environmental stress, again, this formation of the albumin is affected. During storage of a completely formed egg, this is where it is highly affected. There are some diseases like the infectious bronchitis and the egg drop syndrome. They as well affect the correct formation of the albumin at this stage. So then this is important to note. So the thick albumin, so then what you are seeing here is the outer thick and this part here, the inner thick, that thick albumin, it is genetically controlled. So then the amount of the outer thick and the inner thick, it's something that can be genetically manipulated. And so this is part of what the breeders do to make sure that you have the right amount of the outer thick and the inner thick. From there, our eggs move down to the isthmus area. And this is where now the shell membranes are added on the shell. So then as you can see now the shell, the inner membrane and the outer membrane, they are added on our shell. Remember, here we have not yet gotten the outer shell. This is the inner shell and the outer shell only. So defects in shell membranes result in poor calcification and shell weakness. So it means when this inner shell and the outer shell are not properly made, it will later result to weak shells in that egg. So this stage is very important. Now, still at this stage, the egg appears slack and wrinkled. It still does not have the correct shape of an egg. But as now the egg is moving from this isthmus coming to the uterus here, water is pumped through the shell membrane inside, and then it tightens the shell now to give it its final shape. Yeah. So remember, there is water that is pumped inside the shell membrane as the last stage of the isthmus before it comes to the uterus where in the uterus now the calcification of the egg happens. So, isthmus region takes about just one hour and the uterus region takes 18 to 20 hours. This is where the egg stays and it's because the calcification stage takes time. So after this stage, we have now a fully developed eggshell are waiting to be released and for the bird to lay. So I hope we have fully understood the egg laying process, and this will be a benchmark for our subsequent slides. So when we talk about egg quality characteristics, how can we define it? How can we break it down? We can break it down into two. The external egg quality that involves the eggshell quality, the egg shape, and the egg color. And as well, we can describe this egg quality in terms of the internal egg quality. So mainly the yolk and the albumen. So to start with the external characteristics of an egg, let's start talking about the eggshell strength. So we'll be seeing some of the photos um, you shared via our WhatsApp platform. 
um, and part of this you are going to go through the individual pictures that you had shared. So in terms of the eggshell strength, we do have uh, thin shells and sometimes we get shell less eggs. Yeah. So remember, in our photo, we talked about the uterus where calcification happens. Remember as well, we talked about the shell membrane that forms the basis for the calcification. So when you come here to talk about thin shells, it is either the calcification process didn't happen correctly or completely there was no calcification. So the eggshell strength make, means that we get eggs which have weak shells and which are prone to breakages. Yeah. So one of the facts that you need to know is that generally smaller eggs seems to have very stronger shells. However, big eggs, they require a big surface area for calcium deposition. So meaning that bigger eggs will have a tendency to have weak shells because the calcium deposition happens on a big, bigger surface area. Again, we find that young hens whose shell glands have not yet fully developed seems, seem to have thin shells. And of course, as the buds are starting to lay, you might start to get double yolks. And it is because the shell glands are still maturing. They are not yet matured. However, again, older buds, you'll find that they'll have diminishing eggshell strength. And the reason, main reason for this is that the calcium from the blood is not readily available to be deposited to the eggs just because of the age of the birds. And the reason why some of you farmers, you have experienced that the older bird seems to have poor, you know, weak shells as, you know, as they grow older. So then that's about eggshell strength. Let's go about the quality in terms of the shell integrity, the cracks. So cracks usually comes basically because of mechanical damage. <clears throat> so then some of these cracks um, are visible and others are not visible with your eye up until you do the candling. And you are, in a short, you are going to just check on how we do the candling so that you're able even to identify the hairline cracks. So what are the, some of the causes of this? Some of the causes of this is infrequent egg collection. So it means in your farm, if you don't regularly collect the eggs, there is a tendency of those eggs either to be stepped by the chicken or some even maybe to, um, to, to knock each other. Uh, for the farmers who are having the cage system, if the inclination of the cage is not appropriate. You'll find that as the eggs are rolling down, they might um, they might undergo some mechanical damage, and especially if uh, there are sharp wires. You know, basically the design of that cage is not right, so you can get cracks because of that. Again, if you disturb birds in the nest during their laying process, so as they are trying to lay, you can actually have uh, cracks in those eggs. One of the core things to note here is that cracks are usually the points for egg contamination. So then you do not want your eggs to be cracked because it is going to be the points for um, contamination. There are some other external characteristics we find in eggs. There are some eggs which are rough, have pimples, pinholes, or they are mottled. So some of the causes of this Diseases again, infectious bronchitis, infectious laryngotrichitis, avian encephalomyelitis. These are some of the diseases that can cause the rough pimple spinoles mottled. This as well can be caused by inadequate clean water supply. So then if the birds don't get enough water, you are able to get this kind of eggshells. Sudden changes in lighting programs. 
So if you're not following the right lighting programs, you can as well get such ads. High stocking density and poor spacing, yeah? So if the buds are not well spaced, you'll definitely get such in your farm. Of course, this one as well can be linked to genetics. So then there are some buds which are prone to these eggshell textiles. Miss Sharpen eggs. So um, part of some of the photos that you have. So what causes this? Diseases again can be a source of this. IB culprit, egg drop syndrome again, avian influenza, Newcastle disease, you know, because what happens with these diseases is that it affects the albumin quality. That process of making the albumin is affected by these diseases. And so then the egg loses the moisture content, the right moisture content. And so then, of course, it develops the misshapened eggs. So other factors is inadequate clean water supply, which is very important in birds. When you have the birds stressed, either you mishandle them, you know, you have a worker who is very rough with the birds. If you overcrowd the birds, again, if you're having poor lighting patterns, they can cause the misshapened eggs. This as well can be seen in young birds, and it is because the shell glands are still developing. Eggshell color. So, um, eggshell color is mainly controlled by genetics. So, here in Kenya, we have the brown eggs, and this is because the breeds we are under is either Isa brown, Highland brown, or some other breeds, and they are chiefly brown in color, and it is because our market prefers the brown eggs. In other places, we have white eggs. Now, the pigmentation of that color can actually be affected. It can be affected by stress. So when the birds have been subjected to excess stress, there's a hormone that is released to control the process of egg formation. And when this hormone is released, it makes that pigmentation not to be deposited correctly. And so you will find still the color is brown, but the brown is pale. Number two, the age of the buds. So then as the buds grow older, we have said that the surface area of the egg can become bigger. And so then the pigmentation might not give you the correct brownish color that you'd want in an egg just because of the age of the bud. Diseases, Newcastle disease, infectious bronchitis can as well affect that deposition of the shell color. So then whenever you find a variation in terms of the pigmentation of your eggshell can be caused by any one of these. So if now we can go to another characteristic of the internal egg quality. So we have the egg yolk color. So when you break an egg, the yolk has different pigmentation of the color, and this is mainly uh, influenced by the diet, as opposed to the egg shell that is mainly driven by genetics. The egg yolk color is mainly determined by what that bud feeds. However, that pigmentation in the yolk can vary when there are some condition in the bud that will decrease the feed absorption of the pigment inside the diet. So in the instances where you are having high worm infestation, in the instances when the bud has any condition affecting its liver and in the instances you are having coccidiosis you'll find the nice yellow yolk color that you would want in your egg will be pale will not be the right color so whenever you are having your eggs you break it up just check if it is missing this color ask yourself what is the likely cause that you're not getting the right egg yolk color the albumin um, in some uh, 
uh, professional you know institutions they usually measure in terms of the quality of the albumen then again i had mentioned initially when an egg goes bad what mainly happens is that the albumen is actually affected much more so then it becomes a bit watery and eggs prefer to be stored in cool temperatures so then when it is stored in higher temperatures they tend to go bad easily there are some instances that you may op you may break an egg and you find that the albumen has a distinctive greenish color this just indicates to you that um, the vitamin B has been in excess. And this usually happens when farmers over supplement water based vitamins. So, when you do the excess supplementation of vitamins, you'll find that the albumin tends to be greenish. When you again break up the eggs, you find some blood spots. So, then what are the, some of the causes of the blood spots? Um, when you sample your eggs and you find you're getting lots of blood spots, it might indicate to you there's a deficiency of vitamin K in your diet. So blood spot, as much as in is a, can be caused by deficiency of vitamin K, we as well know that there are some breeds which are much more prone to blood and the meat spots. So in a summary, what are these external factors in terms of characteristics? So then we have generally the flock strain, the management aspect and the egg handling. And all this can be summarized to point out in terms of the quality and to terms of what you are experiencing in terms of your egg. This as well happens in terms of the um, internal factors, yeah, characteristic of an egg, the color, the texture, firmness, consistency, appearance, functional properties and some of the things we've mentioned in terms of the blood spots, meat spots, microbial contamination, roundworms, and of odors and flavors. So in summary, when we are talking about abnormalities in the eggs, it can be any one of these. It can be definitely be any one of these. However, our main concern in our farms is just to check out how frequent all the numbers of the abnormal eggs you're finding in your farm. If you get one or two, maybe in a day, it is not an alarming situation. If you find that over the days, the number of abnormal eggs starts to increase, it should point you to do something or to investigate to investigate what is the main cause for that yeah so then i have with me uh photos that farmers you graciously shared via the whatsapp platform and we'll go just through them in summary um i'll start with the first photo you're seeing on your left so the farmer possibly collected this and he found one brownish and the rest a bit pale. Again, remember we've talked about eggshell color. So then the deposition of the eggshell color varies. This is a brown you'd want in a, in a brown breed. And we have gone through some of the factors that can cause this. So again, Go back, check what is the main reason why um, these birds are not depositing the right eggshell color. Is it the size? Are they sick? Um, is it stress related? Second picture, one egg is a bit bigger than the rest. So again, what are the numbers in your farm? Is it a cause of alarm? And then number two, if you are getting lots of big shells, is it the age of the bird? As we have, as we have mentioned, as the birds grow older, they tend to give you bigger eggs, and of course, their weights are a bit higher. Elongated eggs, you know, elongated eggs. Again, remember we've talked about misshapened eggs. A factor to do with 
the shell membrane process of egg formation. So then when it has not formed correctly, then you're going to get the elongated, the missharpened eggs. Yeah. So then again, it is to go back and uh, be able to get to know what is the main cause for this in your farm. If you get one or two, as I've said, it's not something alarming. But if you get a series of these eggs, then it should point to something. Weak shells or shellless eggs. Again, a classic example of poor formation of the shell membrane, as I've indicated in the Isthmus region. So when this is not formed correctly, when this bud through goes through the calcification process, the shell is going to be weak. This is the same as here. So then the shell membrane process was not done correctly. So it is to go back and understand, is it disease? Are there, is there a disease that is affecting my flock? Is it that these, the birds have been stressed and they're forming this? So then it's something to do with the wrong egg forming process at the Eastmouth region of the reproductive tract. So then the lower picture, on the extreme left, the pigmentation of this egg seems to vary. So this top part is a bit pale, the down part seems brown. So then again, it's everything to do with the eggshell color, the process of depositing the eggshell color. Uh, was this bad stressed, you know, for it to have a wrong eggshell uh, color deposition? Staining, as the egg goes through the last cycle, you know, the formation of the cuticle. Was it stressed? Was the bud disturbed? Yeah. So this other photo is about thinning of the eggshell. So then it points that at this point, the egg shell membrane formation was not rightly done. And that's why you find in here should be a point of weakness for this egg. This is tells in terms of the shell membrane formation was not done correctly. And so then the deposition of calcium was not even, was not done correctly. And the last photo shows you just excess deposition of the calcium. So then that's why you're finding these rough, rough patches on top of the egg. So for the internal egg quality photos some of you had shared, um, the first two photos on your left is of a double yolk. So then what happens with double yolk? So if I can go back to our, our photo on the reproductive tract, we said that the ovum or the yolk is released from here and comes here. So, in funny instances, the yolk or the ovum can be released as two, two of them. So then when they're released two of them, the two undergoes the process of egg formation, comes down, and by the point it comes here, it is calcified as two yolks. So in other words, it's like twinning, formation of twins. So basically that's, what you call the double yolk. Again, is the incidences quite huge in the farm? What does it point out? Are the birds stressed? Is it a genetic predisposition or something like that? <clears throat> the photo on the right, this is basically of, um, I, I got, these are boiled egg and so then when um, the farmer uh, wanted to eat the egg, they found some spots. So these are the meat spots. We call them the meat spot. It is on the albumen. So again, what happens on this? So there are two things that can happen. If I may just go back to my photo here. So as the yolk is being, is grows inside the ovary, it might get some blood spots. Now, when that blood spot um, comes 
to the in, you know when that when that egg gets that blood spot from this level and then down the process it continues with that blood spot and maybe during this process it picks some part of meat during um during its trans it, its transition in the reproductive tract bit of meat part during this uh, reproductive tract you end up getting the meat spots or the blood spots now this is usually a very key indicator in terms of the quality of the eggs and you do not want your eggs to have lots of blood spot because for the consumer they'll not prefer taking such kind of an egg it is not you you will not like even to eat such an egg yeah Let's go through a very simple process, basic process you can do in your farms in terms of grading your own eggs. I know maybe this might be very new to some of you, but eggs are usually graded. Basically, it's given the um, wording of AA as a very good grade, mainly found in supermarkets. Others are called A. Others are called B, and then we have the inedible. So let's go through this to better understand how we can actually implement it in our farms. So when we start with the exterior eggs grading, when you're looking at the surface of the egg, you can either grade it as A, B, or moderate, I mean, or dirty. So then the photos clearly shows you the different category of the grading. So you can have a very clean egg. You can grade it as A. You can have an egg that is slightly stained, just slightly, slightly spots. That is grade B. But if the stain is quite moderate or it's excess, you know, you grade it as dirty. So grade A fetches, of course, definitely better price. Grade A, in terms of its shelf life, it will stay longer, as opposed to grade B and the dirty eggs. Two, we can as well grade our eggs based on the shell texture or the shape of the eggs. Again, grade A. We can as well do it to be grade A if it has a bit of small calcium deposit, just small, small um, calcium deposit, less than an eighth of an inch, can as well qualify to be grade A. But anything that is stained is um, has a, a, a thin weakness point, looks cracked, you know, it has like a cracked round it. Um, you know, it has very huge calcium deposits on the on the shell. It has a wrong shape. You know, it is small and round. This will be categorized as grade B. Yeah. Another way of we can grade um, uh, these eggs is by checking on the internal characteristics of the egg. Yeah. So then uh, this photo, I picked it this afternoon. I took an egg and I just used my mobile phone torch to, to lit the egg. And you can see I saw an air cell inside the egg. And so then how do you categorize this? So one is that fresh eggs, as you can see, AA grade, have very small air cell. So as the egg ages with time the air cell grows bigger and bigger and why this happens is because the liquid component of the egg evaporates because an egg is a living thing it has pores so as it breathes in and breathes breathes out evaporation occurs and then this really uh, um, reduces the level of the liquid inside it and then the air cell becomes 
bigger. So there are people who have developed a standard in terms of grading this. So then when you find that the depth is less than an eighth of an inch, that's the A grade. When you find that the depth is three over 16 of an inch, you grade it as an A. When you find that the air cell is bigger than three over 16th of an inch, you grade it at grade B. How about the yolk in terms of grading? So again, when you do the same candling and you find that the egg yolk, you're not able to see it as you're doing the candling, it tells you that that egg is of good quality and it is fresh. So in other words, when you do the candling and you're not able to see the egg yolk, it tells you that the egg is fresh. But as the egg ages, what happens, as I'd mentioned before, is that the albumen quality deteriorates. And when this happens, it makes the egg yolk to be now be clearly be seen. Yeah. So to grade this egg is that the AA grade, you will not be able to see the egg yolk as you candle. The grade A egg, you'll slightly or fairly see the egg yolk. But for the grade B, you'll clearly see that's an egg yolk inside there. Yeah. So for the albumen, so then when you want to check on the quality of the albumen, we talked about the spots. Yeah. So then for the grade AA, you're not going to see any spot at all. For the grade A, you as well will not see any spot. But for grade B eggs, you'll see a small slightly spot on the egg, as you can see on the photo down here. So then this is less than an eighth of an inch when you're doing the cuddling. So then this will qualify to be a grade B egg. However, again, if this spot is bigger than this, that egg is not fit for human consumption. So then in your farms, please, when you get that the mark spot is quite big and you're doing cuddling, it is not correct to have that egg sold to the market. And that is the reason why we saw of a photo that um, our customers, after boiling the eggs, they're able to get the meat spot in their eggs. So another way we're able to check on the quality of the eggs is when we actually break the egg, some few sample of eggs. So we categorize this as egg A. There is no meat spot at all or blood spot. Grade B, if you find less than an eighth of an inch of a spot, and in edible, if you find that the meat spot is bigger than an eighth of an inch of a spot. So then this is not again right to sell it to the market. Um, in terms of checking out on the albumen thickness of eggs, again, we can we can um, grade our eggs. Um, when you split your egg on a flat surface, if the egg covers a small area, it is small and compact. It tells you that a very good fresh quality egg. If the egg moderately covers an area, as you can see from the photo here, right? It tells you it is grade A. It's fair enough. It's a good egg. Again, if you break your egg on a flat surface and you find the egg just spreads and covers a white area, it tells you the albumen is more watery and it tells you it might fall in grade B of an egg. So these are the basic things we're able to grade our eggs just to get to understand the quality of the eggs we are selling to the market. And you can actually grade your eggs and fetch different prices based on your grading criteria. So what influences good quality eggs? One, ensure that your birds are having the correct amount of dietary minerals and vitamins. This is applied in feeds and it can be supplemented on an advice of a vet 
through water. Number two, for laying baths, you need to have a proper balance of calcium and phosphorus. So then when this is not done correctly, and especially for the farmers who are mixing for themselves, it has a negative influence in terms of the quality of your eggs. The balance of the limestone particle size, that is the difference between the fine and the coarse, has been shown to influence as well on the quality of the eggs. Notwithstanding that we have mentioned a lot of adequate clean water, this is very important. Remember, if your birds don't get enough water, they'll not give you the right size of an egg and you are actually going to interfere with the process of the egg formation, as I mentioned before. Water very critical in laying birds. So here we re do recommend uh, farmers to feed on fugal layer complete meal for the birds which are in production. These are the hybrid birds. And then as well, we recommend that you use a fugal kinyeji layers mash for the birds which are kinyeji and they are laying. Um, <clears throat> as a company, remember I mentioned that, that we are continually improve ourselves. So we have brought in a new product to the market for the layer farmers. And this is the fugo chick and the duckling crumbs. So we have the fugo chick and the duckling crumbs to be fed uh, farmers who are doing uh, layers chicks first three weeks. And then from week four to week eight, now you transition them to the fugo chick and the duckling marsh. Then from week nine up until the bird starts to lay, you feed them on fugo grower marsh. Then when you get 2% of eggs is when now you're able to transition those birds to fugo layer complete meal. So our new addition for farmers is the fugo chicken, the duckling crumbs. We have trialed this. We found that these chicks are able to grow faster. Number two, you are able to reduce feed wastages during this period. And definitely these birds grow better when they start with the chick and the duckling crumbs. For farmers who are doing kienyeji for layers, we do have a three-phase diet, and especially farmers who are doing kienyeji commercial egg production. So we recommend you start with the kienyeji chick mash for the first two weeks. And then you go to fugo kienyeji grower mash from week three up until when the kienyeji bird is going to start laying eggs. When you get 5% to 10% of eggs from the kinyeji bud, then you transition them to the kinyeji layers mash. We as, well know, we as well know that there are farmers who have mixed up their buds. So then they're having buds in the same house, which are, uh, you know, you know there are different stages, they are chicks, they are big, bigger, but they're kinyeji, and they have no intention of separating them. So then as well, we have brought in a new feed called Fugo Kienyeji Econ Mash that can be fed across all these stages. And it's mainly also meant for farmers who are not into commercial Kienyeji farming. So then these are one phase diet that can be supplemented or fed across all the stages of the Kienyeji bird. And this cut across all types of Kienyeji birds. So um, we are having Vigosin in the market, and I I know there was a moment we there was a period of time that we had run out of stocks, but I can confirm now that the Vigosin is available. What is Vigosin? Vigosin is a dietary supplement, very good for farmers who are experiencing heat stress, very good for farmers who have just placed chicks and they'd want the birds to have better appetite, very good to be given just after the vaccination process or any other form of the stress in the birds. Um, and it's a product available, uh, distributed by Unga Farm Care, 
manufactured by silver. So that's it for today. Uh, in today's presentation, I'll take it back to uh, Patrick, who will be able to lead us through the question and answer session. Uh, thank you, Daniel, for your time. Uh, sorry, I had my device uh, misbehaving. Now, um, for the question, I think we just have one question, Daniel. Uh, someone asked whether you can hatch a double yolk uh, egg. The answer is no. A double yolk cannot be hatched. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, yeah, it is no, but I've seen uh, just one circumstance where a double yolk uh, hatched and uh, it just hatched uh, one chick that was live, but uh, generally very weak and the other chick was dead. I think there was a competition for the space resource plus uh, the yolk reserve, uh, but double yolks just uh, don't, uh, don't place them to hatch. So uh, Daniel, I think uh, that's it for today's session. I don't see any other any other question. For those who have asked whether we can have uh, them joining our WhatsApp group, I've tried to add them to our various WhatsApp groups. For those asking uh, whether they can join now, we'll send our contacts so that you can be able to contact us and we can be able to send to you the links to 